G'day, we're continuing our series of Jim Caronius' 100 Integrals and here's number 22. Uh, we seem to be continuing a little theme of using radicals and uh, you notice here that we have a rather curious fraction. There's no obvious substitution involved but we do notice something else. If we multiply the top and the bottom of this I will separate the, the numerator and denominator. If I multiply the top and bottom by root x minus 1, sorry, x plus 1, I get the following. This times this gives x plus 1, and on the bottom we have a product x minus 1 times x plus 1 gives x squared minus 1. And when we have a difference between squares within a radical, these are what are really standard forms. The sum of difference between squares are standard forms uh, that you should become familiar with. So, seeing that we can actually change this using this technique to get ourselves this pattern that we recognise makes this so much easier. Now it turns out that if we separate the two this looks rather nasty but it's actually quite nice. The derivative of this, if I take the derivative of the square root of x squared minus 1, I would get a half multiplied by x squared minus 1 to the power negative a half, which would put it on the bottom, which is where we have it, multiplied by the, the derivative of what's inside, which is 2x. So if I had the 2x here and the half out the front, this would fit the pattern exactly and the integral would be x squared minus 1, square root of x squared minus 1. Test it out. Derivative, if I wrote this with a power of a half, the half would come down the front, there it is. This would reduce by 1, so I'd have x squared minus 1 to the negative a half, there it is. And then I would multiply by the derivative of this, which is 2x. So this is in fact the derivative of that. And since we started with radicals, I'm going to leave it with the radical. Now this integral over here can be, it's a standard integral. To actually work it out yourself is a bit of an interesting challenge. Uh, I won't do it in this video, but I probably will do it perhaps after I've finished the series. Um, being able to derive these standard forms is a very useful skill and I encourage you during your study not just to accept them but to learn to derive them. Now it transpires that this integral can be written in a couple of different ways. One of them would be, uh, for those of you familiar with hyperbolic trig functions, the inverse cosine or inverse cosh x, uh, plus a constant of course. That would be one valid solution. Uh, the one probably the students in, in schools in Australia are more familiar with would be this one. The logarithm of x plus root x squared minus 1. And that would be more the standard solution. But at this stage, it, as a school question, you would just be expected to use the standard integrals at that point. This one you'd certainly be expected to work out. And that's the solution to that particular integral. Fairly short and sweet, a an interesting little twist because we saw the need to get a pattern we recognised, at least I did, um, in the denominator here. And thereafter it was just a matter of separating out the numerator and working on the two parts. I hope you liked it, I hope you found it informative, and I do encourage you to uh, 
try to study these standard integrals and try to derive them as part of your as an interesting exercise as part of your uh, study program. Thank you for watching.